Ay, 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 ay. Look, look. Baby girl, love my bop and unlike me too. No roof on my top and my babe see through. Hating on the pen, don't stop, shit ain't gon' feed you. I've been all on my grind, so why I need you? Baby girl, love my bop and unlike me too. No roof on my top and my babe see through. Hating on the pen, don't stop, shit ain't gon' feed you. I've been all on my grind, so why I need you? Big flex, my Thank you, Gantry, for sponsoring today's video. A productivity desk setup has to fulfill a lot of our checkboxes and nowadays working from home has become an asset simply because the quality of our work is so dependent on the tech we use to complete our tasks with ease. I thought it would be a good idea to showcase what a productivity desk setup looks like for us in order to give you all a few ideas of what you can get and what you can do to maximize your desk setup for your own productivity. And so this for us is where the magic now happens. It's where we needed to find a way to mix Jan's MacBook Pro with his new rig we now use for our type of work. It was essential for us to be able to find ways to achieve dual workspaces so he could comfortably bring his side projects into the space with a simple press of a button and a simple tool called Logitech Flow. But overall, here we typically decide what makes it into a video, come up with new ideas for our cinematic intros, New ideas we might want to try such as these A-rolls and anything that's related towards video editing and photo editing. Although, if you watch our previous video, you'll realize we use this desk a lot for shooting. It took a lot of time trying to come up with a perfect layout for our type of work, but after talking with John and trying to figure out what he needed on this desk, here are the items that are able to make his working from home a lot more productive. Our paint of choice here is from Bear. Mostly because this grey dark ash paint really diffuses light super well and is very easy to decorate with anything really. With two coats, I find that it easily hides any imperfections, making it super hard to cause any type of scratches. But if you happen to really scuff the wall with your desk or C-stand, it can easily chip the paint off completely. This grey tone though makes it super easy for us to hang our canvases. This triple collection is part of our new Hall of Fame release made by our company Canvog and even though we are still working on bringing a lot more familiar faces to the collection, I am personally thinking of doing a black theme for my own setup. Just know that whether you put up a canvas, a shelf or even a pegboard, this dark ash tone makes it super easy to match with anything. Like for example, these matte black legs that were sent over from a friend of mine at Rise. Black legs on a wall like this easily adds character to your workspace. It gives off a bit of an industrial look which is exactly what we were going for. What I really like about the Relax is that even though the motors are smaller, the rise is a lot smoother with 1.5 inches per second and so when you release the button it ends with a nice smooth stop. It does have 4 memory buttons that we easily program to effortlessly raise our workspace with heights that range from 27.5 inches to 47.2 inches and a lift capacity of 260 pounds, which as you can imagine was extremely important for us. It does take about 27.5 inches off the wall, so if you're going to find matching drawers, maybe you want to take depth into account here. Modularity although is what I truly like here. I was able to pair this desk with anything really, including an autonomous cable tray so we could have proper cable management with very little work. The cable tray easily attaches to what I like to call the spine of the desk, and by mounting it facing the wall, it really hides all the true mess you have in there including our huge power brick to achieve most of our connections. With time though, I will be making a sub $100 cable management video that will reveal how to properly cable manage a desk to achieve maximum aesthetics. But for now, this here can be used as a cheat code along some nice 3M straps that we have been using to route cables. So if we slide all the way back with our autonomous chair, the only cable you should see is your power cord coming all the way from your power brick. Yes, our Ergo Chair Pro is both our favorite chair. In fact, we ordered a black model for this set that's supposed to be here soon. I introduced this chair to Jan back when we filmed our first desk setup makeover episode and he really wanted to bring it to this space. For $500, in my opinion, it is very much a super hard chair to beat at this price. I did film him without him noticing and I know for a fact he loves reclining on this thing. It offers flexible lumbar support for any seated position, an adjustable height of 18 to 21.7 inches from the floor, adjustable armrest, 
headrest and backrest and of course great seat tilt. He does seem to love the adjustability the reclining seat offers by being able to adjust the tension but my personal favorite is the woven mesh back this has. I was sent this chair a long time ago by Autonomous to promote it although till this day I cannot get enough of it. They do have great trial policy so if you want to give it a shot do it, if you don't like it then return it. It's exactly what I told myself with these new Vasagli filing cabinets. I did end up keeping them though because they look so good within this desk. The building process was surprisingly nothing too complicated, in fact it was very similar to IKEA. They are a bit on the expensive side mainly because of the wood, but it does meet the industrial theme we are trying to go for here. The metal is sturdy, it doesn't seem to easily scratch at all when you skim it with items and I enjoy the thickness of the wood as well as the sturdiness it offers overall. I decided to keep the wheels to add a bit of height to them since they are about 26 inches in terms of height. It is exactly the height I wish my Alex drawers were because when it comes to lowering this particular desk, you have such a huge flexible range of motion at all times. And if you don't want them in the frame because you need to fix something like say, your cable management, you can easily unlock its wheels and smoothly drag it away. The top drawers are about 15 inches in width and 13.5 inches in terms of depth. They do have a good height to them but if you need more than 3 inches you can simply just use the filing cabinet as a storage unit instead. Up to now we have absolutely no complaints with these rustic brown drawers. We did try to match these as much as we could with other tabletops but Jan really likes the IKEA pine arp we had at the other office. The wood texture on this is honestly unlike any other in my opinion, it automatically makes things look absolutely good and I truly like the fact that it has a matte finish to it which doesn't cause glare at all. IKEA does sell countertops that can be used on standing desks and because Rice did make their motorized legs super modular, we were able to fit this 98 inch countertop on this frame. This did have to be drilled on the tabletop although I like the fact that the rays included these nice little sponges to avoid damaging it. Plus, the spine on the legs is able to support the middle of the countertop to avoid a massive warp towards the middle like we have at the other office. But unlike that table, instead of using the Philips Hue strips, we decided to go with the new LifeX strips. And the main reason is because we like the fact we can create gradients with these, they are a lot more powerful when it comes to emitting light and overall doesn't cause this dot effect the hues seem to emit. Our only issue is that 99% of our lighting in this office is Philips Hue dependent, which of course our bulbs are all pretty much paired up with our gantry light sets. Gantry is a company that leverages 3D printing to create lighting products on demand using plant based materials. This is one of the reasons I decided to bring my palm gantry set in this new workspace. The only thing you should note is that not all their lights are hue compatible. This is why I sort of hacked my palm floor light to fit an A19 bulb. But if you don't want that you can always use their hue filter within their website to check those who are compatible. With 75% less carbon emissions, they can still deliver premium lighting on sets such as this one. On this desk, we have their carved table light in matte black to fit our industrial set. We of course paired it up with an A19 Philips Hue bulb so we can easily control the intensity and the color of the light. I really like the way this lamp diffuses light on this tabletop because it makes it look super smooth and provides a nice little cozy environment. I think they are great for someone who is currently creating their workspace, works from home or simply great as a housewarming gift. Which is why even for our new TV set we decided to install a couple of signal wall lights, simply because we wanted to create a desirable environment when it came to watching movies. Their lights do start at $98, you can use their quick ship feature to see what's in stock and ready to be shipped immediately. We are trying to use less overhead lights to keep the vibes of the videos and bring a bit more coziness into our own production. Regardless, Gantry has been a go-to within our workspaces and it is a company we've been using for the past 2 years. I still use their discontinued lamp to flank light into the wall for the PC and I definitely suggest you check them out. Just like I strongly suggest you check out these beautiful Walnut Audio Engine speakers. The HD3 Mini Home Music System is exactly the type of speakers we were looking for this desk. We do rock them wirelessly via Bluetooth connection so it makes it super easy to be able to connect it to our PC or MacBook devices when needed. They have this old analog vintage design to them, deliver an incredible high fidelity stereo sound and match our aesthetics. The speakers did come with these detachable magnetic grills to prevent damaging the finish but we find it kills the vibe of the setup a bit too much. 
We did have to keep in mind that these connect over with a 2 meter speaker wire, so we did have to route them properly within our cable management set. Regardless of that, the sound on these is just so good. But Jan enjoys the fact that he can use his Audio Technica headphones instead by connecting them to the audio jack board on the right speaker. As an editor myself, I do find it best to edit videos using headphones. We thought it was best to go with the classic M50X headphones that Audio Technica makes. In my opinion, even in 2021, these are so worth it. They are super comfortable, very durable, and the fact that you get so many cables within this nice pouch is just awesome. They do sell some nice brown ear pads you can get to make these more customizable, but overall as it is, these are headphones that truly allow you to hear everything as an audiophile. We do have them resting on this nice walnut headphone stand made by GrooveMate, which is cool and all, because you can just disconnect the cable from the port, put them in your drawer within its pouch, and have them as a standalone unit on the stand. We also order a matching laptop stand from GrooveMate to match the aesthetics, a nice walnut pen cup, a full mouse pad set to go along with our colors, and a walnut desk shelf that allows us to hide some of the disaster going in the back. Although, to be honest, you can go wrong with a desk tray for things such as SD cards, knives, and even our MX charging cables. For Jan's keyboard and mouse, he decided to stick with the MX Master 3 and a full-size MX keys. Jan, why did you stick with these? Because of the ecosystem. But essentially, the fact that he can map all of his favorite shortcuts within Premiere and Photoshop allows us to work faster. I would say that the biggest takeaway with this set is Logitech Flow. Because by using dual displays like these, he can allow himself to use the same mouse and keyboard for his MacBook Pro and Windows PC. So the transition is super easy with one press of a button and allows him to stay connected with both devices at all times, to the point that he can copy paste from one machine to the other. He still wishes that the call digit could be used as a dock for both devices in order to use the SD card port, but he only uses this hub to connect it to the top monitor whenever he needs access to macOS. His gaming mouse of choice is the Razer Viper on this charging dock. He only uses this at night when he feels like gaming on Valorant or even when he feels like hopping on a session of Rocket League. Honestly though, he is better sticking to a controller when it comes to this. We do currently have these edifier speakers everywhere around the office, but I still need to spend time with them in order to set them up and be able to recommend them. So I'll talk about it in our office tour when the time comes in a few weeks. But yeah, we don't normally use any of our monitor speakers. Don't get me wrong though, the Dell U3417 Dolly U and the LG 32 inch Ergo 4K display don't have bad speakers at all. It's just that we'd rather use them for what they are truly meant for. We did partner up with Vivo last video to mount this monitor, but because we wanted to stack them up, John and I ordered a second Vivo monitor arm with a longer pole. We wanted to install both of these in a way that the weight would be evenly spread towards the middle and not focused on a single arm or on a single point of pressure within the table. It's exactly why we decided to go with two completely separate arms. At $200 for the table and $1,000 for each monitor, we weren't really ready to make the sacrifice and risk breaking both monitors. Look, in short, on top we have our editing monitor which is a 4K panel with HDR10 and at the bottom our productivity monitor that delivers great screen real estate. Note that the Dell does not have a USB-C port like the LG monitor and it is exactly why the MacBook only connects to the Ergo display. Regardless, the top monitor is essentially color calibrated for when it comes to editing or content. With these arms, everything can be moved in a wide range of directions, hide all of our monitor cables within their cable management compartments, and allow this PC and MacBook workspace to really interact with each other properly. The current MacBook powering part of the setup is a 16 inch 2019 Intel version. We struggle at getting things up and running with this laptop a lot of the time, which is why we tend to work on the custom PC about 90% of the time. I did build this Lee and Lee 011 custom PC with an i9 10980XE, 64GB of XPG RAM, and my old RTX 3080 GPU. Frankly though, I still think that the best CPU for an editing workflow is the Ryzen 9 15900X, so it's something I need to change within this rig. Don't get me wrong though, the whole PC looks absolutely nice with these Corsair LL120 RGB fans, the H150i as a cooler of choice, and a 750 watt power supply from Corsair to power up this baby. The case does have a USB-C port, but I wish it came with a SD card slot to avoid using adapters. Overall, it is small, fits in the corner within this 98 inch countertop, and delivers great aesthetics towards the whole setup. 
We do game on this workspace from time to time, but as of now, we are trying to come up with ways of using our gaming TV, my desk setup, and Jan's workspace to form our own little Rocket League team. I'm super excited to show you guys my workspace next week. I have been able to delegate a lot of work to this one so I could focus on scripting the whole business side of the YouTube channel and the Instagram page. I hope this video gives you guys ideas of what you can get for your own working from home setup. I need to go order our blacked out edition for our new canvases. I will see you all soon. Take care.